five, explain the difference with differences between male and female, and the biblical principle of loving one spouse and mutual submission to one another. So explain that um, difference between male and female because that's a problem of most marriages. So let them understand why males and females are problem. Now why, why didn't the problem appear when they were dating? Because when they were dating, they did not have to face daily problems. So it's just having fun, then that, there's no problem. But some couples even have problem even in dating because some people just don't know how to have fun. Now as Christians, we should learn to have fun by seeing the creation of God and say, I enjoy that. When we eat, we can say, I enjoy the food. When we love people and are loved by people, we can say, I enjoy the love, uh, the love relationship between people. So we can rejoice in the Lord. We can enjoy life. But some people never learn to enjoy life. Some people, you know, life is just hard work. And then forcing the other person to, to obey and forcing the other person to change. And so it's always commanding and criticism, yelling. It's, life is always like that. That way, there's no fun in life. So people need to learn to have fun in life, to enjoy life, enjoy God, enjoy the blessings of God, enjoy the blessings from people before they can enjoy life. And then they can have a good marriage. If they cannot enjoy life, they just see life as always work, always work, and always criticism, always uh, demands, always demanding the other person. Then marriage becomes just demanding. It's always demanding something. So when people understand that, they hope, hopefully they will change. And I hope that everyone who hear this will change first. To understand that God wants us to rejoice in the Lord, to enjoy God, and love each other, and enjoy the loving relationship, and enjoy serving God, because God is happy when we do anything for God, even a cup of cold water. And then, the importance of mutual submission, because many people thought it's just the wife submitting to the husband. I've met many husbands like that, even pastor, who said that, well, the wife has to submit to me. But I said, the Bible also says, love your wife as Christ loved the church. So do you love your wife that much that you're willing to give your life for your wife? And also, did you see Ephesians 5.21, submit to one another? Do you submit to her also? When she says some of, tell you some of her needs, do you submit to that and listen to her? Now, actually, a lot of men just use that verse of the submission of wife to force the wife to obey him but he himself doesn't obey Christ so that doesn't make sense then the marriage would have problem okay and then next explain how they can say words of grace and words of the law gently in order to build up the relationship now that's a problem with with many many people I went to different countries and I found that many people just criticize, just cut people down, make people feel hurt. It's the daily way of talking. They think that when they don't like someone's behavior, then the, the response should be yelling at them, telling them you have to change. Now, even in the church, I noticed that. They just tell, oh, do this, do that. You didn't do this. You know, It's always commanding and criticizing the other person. So, I will ask them, if someone criticizes you, um, now even though we don't do well, for instance, you just led worship, and then you did not do so well, and then uh, the person in charge says to you, you're doing so bad in the worship today. You, you're not doing well at all. You're good for nothing. How would that make you feel? It doesn't build you up. So the, the best way, even the best way, at least the person is trying, we can say, thank you for trying hard. I see that you're trying. 
we first appreciate, and then we have some suggestion we can say in, in a gentle way. Um, we can ask, what are some ways you think you can improve? What are some ways that you think uh, you, that you can improve in your, the way you lead worship? So in a marriage too, <coughs> we can say, well, what do you think, how, how would you think how we can improve our communication? How we can love each other more, because the Bible says love each other more, that includes you know, husband and wife loving each other, because that's the most important relationship on earth here. Our most important relationship is with God, but our most, relationship, most important relationship on earth is between husband and wife. So if Jesus said that is the great, you know, the great commandment, therefore loving the spouse is the most important commandment on earth, other than loving God. So how can we say it gently? By leading. Um, I demonstrate that again, I hope, hope that you can remember by asking the other person whether they understand the problem. For instance, we can say this, um, when we talk like that, what do you think will happen? How would that affect our family? Now you have to think first before you can talk like that. Because I'm used to talking like that, therefore I can talk like that. But for you, you might have to learn it and think about it. So you just use questions. How can we solve this problem? The children have a problem. How can we take care of that together? How can we discuss about this? How can we discuss without arguing? And uh, what are the reasons why we argue? Can we find a way, you know? Sometimes people like to argue because they think that their way is the best way. Now, God's way is the best way, but for people, we all have problematic ways. So we all need to understand that. We all need to be humble. So that's one element that in counseling, we need to let them know that we need to learn to be humble because we are not all right. We're not all correct. correct. Sometimes we say things that are wrong. Sometimes we do things that are wrong. So about how to raise the children, how to take care of the problem, maybe the way we're using is not right. What is the best way? So to ask questions. So I hope you remember this, to ask questions, to lead the person, to see the problem. Now, if we have arguments like this, how will our marriage be? So first to find out the problem, that the way we relate to each other now, do you think it's a good example to the children? <clears throat> now one person may respond with criticism. Well, it's all because of you. You always yell. Then you, we should say, okay, I'm sorry that I yell. I, I want to learn to not to yell. We want to learn to talk to gently. So I hope we all, you know, learn this and apply this. If we cannot do it ourselves, we cannot counsel people to, to be able to do that. So we, you know, first we ask questions to let their person, to, to, that they can, now as a counselor, I will let them know the problem. First is, do you think communication like this can cause problem in a marriage? And do you think this will affect the marriage? And do you think, you know, what do you think the marriage will become? So we can ask questions like that to let them see the problem. Okay, excuse me for a second. And then the second <coughs> group of question is, no, now actually this is also for them to talk. You know, not just when we're doing counseling, but when they talk to each other, they can use his uh, words of the law. Because we need, now words of grace, I explained already, it's like, I love you, I like you, I appreciate what you do. What you do is important to me. You're kind to me. You know, these are words of grace. But we need to handle problem. We need to uh, take care of problems in the family. 
and that needs words of the law, but need, we need to use it in a gentle way. So they can learn to ask questions. The first group of questions is, um, do you see a problem in this? What problem would it cause in the family? So, so that they will know that, okay, communication like this can have problem. Okay, the second group of question is, what, uh, when, we have, when, we have this, when we have this problem, how would it affect the marriage and the family? So the consequence of this problem. First is find out the problem. Second is, when we have this problem, how would it affect? So they can say, well, uh, if um, things like this happen, then how would, uh, how would our communication be and how would our marriage be? So, so we let them know that this way it's going to affect the family. And then the next group of question is, do you want to improve? Do you want to change? Do you want to work on it? And the fourth group of question is, how? How can we do? And what have you done? What are some things you have done? Does it work? And it, if it doesn't work, number five is, can I suggest something to you that might work? Uh, let me name the group of questions again. To guide, when we are doing counseling, we guide them, and then for them to guide each other when in the daily conversation. First, to guide the other person to understand the problem we are facing, the problem in the communication, problem in the, the relationship, problem in raising the children, a problem in a Christian testimony. And then second is what would this problem, uh, what are the consequences of these problems? How would it affect us? Third, do you want to change? Do you want to improve? Four, what are some ways that can work? And then five, do you want me to suggest some ways? Now, now for me, my suggestions of solving problems is always um, bringing up questions, problems, gently, without criticizing the other person, without putting the blame on the other person, just raise up, raise the question, the problems, and then how can we solve it? So, without emotions, without negative words, without criticism. Try to handle the emotions first before try to handle the problem first. Uh, so that's uh, <clears throat> to you know handle the problem the emotion first before we we talk about the problem. So take care of the emotion first. So that's biblical teaching. So that we don't uh, we're not affected by the emotions and then when we have emotions then we are angry. So instead of using emotional words or using um, you know, criticism to change the other person. But always raise up the, the problem and then discuss it to find a solution. And to appreciate each other, appreciate the effort of each person, that is generally the solution <coughs> to problems. <coughs> Sadly, it's a fact that in many families, uh, the way they solve problem is by yelling, commanding, criticizing. It's all negative ways. All these ways just make the other person feel uncomfortable. So basically, is to find ways that that people can talk about problems in a gentle way without hurting the other person without putting the blame on the other person, to just to talk peacefully to find solutions. 
it's very simple and with love I want to build up the relationship I want to build up the marriage that's very simple but because of the sinful nature of human being therefore we don't we don't have the habit of saying things gently so that's something that we need to learn to do first with our spouse with our children with our members if we want to change our members we don't say well you didn't pray you didn't repent so how good you, you're no good in the kingdom of God you know that doesn't change him he's going to turn him off but we tell him in the sight of God you are very precious God loves you now that's true for every single every single person God loves you God cares about you God wants to work on your life to change your life and build up your life that's what God wants so we always want to give people hope that's the teaching of motivation by grace so that's useful in counseling in marriage in all relationship and mostly in the relationship with God that we should be enjoying God and then we can live un, uh, with grace so I hope that you all understand that it's so important because the world is living under the law in the world it's always the law you have to obey you have to do this do that and uh, it's always requirement it's always criticism therefore in the world it's always war in the world people don't want to love each other they don't want to give to each other they don't want to sacrifice for other people it's only Jesus Christ who did that for us and then we can learn to sacrifice uh, the things that we like most for the other people so that we can bless them we are willing to sacrifice time we're, we're willing to sacrifice our the things we insist on that we are willing to bless other people okay and then so explaining the words of grace and words of the law how to say words of the law gently is very very important and using the five ways to ask questions now let me say again to raise the question to lead the person to understand the problem or also if possible to find the source of the problem the source of the problem could be the habit from childhood or the hatred from childhood or the concept that nobody is good therefore I'm always angry and unhappy so those are some source of sources of problem and then what are the consequences of this problem so that motivate us to change so do you want to change and fourth what are some possible ways to change and then can I suggest some ways to change to you okay seven <clears throat> ask them to try to resolve one of their problems using gentle words the counselor guide them to communicate gently and constructively <clears throat> this is a way of counseling that I have discovered I think God uh, put that idea in my mind I give glory to God for giving me this method this method is like this I asked a couple <coughs> um, can you name one problem you're facing now you like to talk about now it could be the biggest problem you want to talk about or the smallest problem if you want to handle something easier you can talk about a smaller problem or you can talk about big problem whatever it is <coughs> do you want to talk about it and then I explain already the words how to communicate with the words of grace and and the words of the law in a gentle way so use that way to communicate can you try to resolve it by facing each other and saying you is you <coughs> but when we say you don't say you are not you are doing bad <coughs> but we say um, I like to build up a good relationship with you and uh, I notice a problem we have and I like to resolve it with you now this is a gentle way to present a problem I want to build up a good relationship with you and I notice it's affecting our relationship and I like to talk about this so that we can resolve this problem is it okay so this is a gentle way is it okay it's a good way to ask instead of saying you have to do it or saying 
you did not do well forcing the other person to talk you know so that's not a good way but just to uh, say okay I notice this problem can we talk about this and, um, and I want to find a way to resolve it and then I'm the arbitrator or the coach <clears throat> when they're communicating when they say something that is not so nice then I'll ask the person okay can you think what you just said how does that make the other person feel and then he would think and then very often he will re realize yes what I said make the other person unhappy so can you say it in another way I find that this is very difficult for many people because they're used to seeing things that makes the other person feel uncomfortable this is the habit of many people so for them to change is difficult but at least they try to change they try to change and then so in the process they try to resolve a problem and then sometimes one person cannot understand the feeling of the other person then I will help okay uh, can you hear what the other person said the content what would, what is said okay can you name it sometimes people cannot name it they heard something they cannot name it okay then I ask the person to say it again can you say what he just said okay now if he can name it then that's great I, I would say you're doing well if he cannot name it again a couple times then I was I would I would say okay I'll help you this time and hopefully that will help you to listen okay she just said this one two three this is what she said and then I'll ask how about her feelings have you heard her feelings now sometimes when people talk they might not say the feelings but the way they talk shows the feeling because if a person says it's so hard to take care of the children now uh, she did not say the feeling but the feeling behind that is she feel oppressed maybe she feel helpless maybe she feel hopeless maybe she feel unhappy so she could have a number of feelings sometimes we can ask do you feel helpless do you feel burdened with this responsibility so we need to learn to name the feeling of the person it's very important but many people don't want to learn because they will say oh, that's too difficult but now for, uh, for, for you who are here now I ask you this question think about how you take care of your children or take care of your ministry or whatever it is or your spouse when I can say that very often you could be facing difficulty you feel misunderstood your spouse misunderstand you your church members misunderstand you and give you pressure and make you feel it's difficult to do ministry it's difficult to build up the family now when I say this you would feel I understand your problem so when someone says something I try to discover the feeling behind that that feeling of frustration unhappy or helplessness or uh, being alone to face a problem whatever it is we try to imagine I'm that person how would <clears throat> the feeling be so that's something for us to learn for our whole lifetime you can practice this with your spouse and find out his or her feelings and then name it and then see if it's correct and then let her tell you this is a good exercise if you want to build up the marriage it's a good exercise to build up the marriage so in the communication to resolve a problem often there is also the problem of the feelings that one person feel neglected feel despised 
feel unimportant, feel lonely. So if the person can name it and say, I'm sorry I make you feel lonely because I did not respond to you, I did not help you, and that makes you feel unhappy. I'm sorry about that. I try to learn to do that. Please help me to, to do that. So that is learning to understand the feeling and then responding and then to resolve the problem. Actually, a lot of times the problem is not just in resolving the, uh, finding the solution, but it also a lot of time is with resolving the feelings. <clears throat> Very often, the relational problem lies in the feeling first. There is a feeling problem and then there is a solution problem. The feeling problem is that the one person feels lonely, oppressed, unhappy, misunderstood. And then to resolve the problem, how to resolve the problem, how, how can we take care of the children better, how can we talk better, how can we understand each other better, how can we stop yelling at each other. So those are the two different things. One is the feeling and the other is the uh, the ways to resolve the problem. So for a couple to rebuild a relationship, it's very important that they can talk about the feelings so that the other person understand and then respond to the feelings and support the other person and show love to the other person so that the relationship, the feelings can be healed. When the feelings are healed, then the relationship can be healed. So I hope you understand this and see that there are real problems in the family that need to be taken care of the feelings and then the solution, how to resolve a problem, how to take care of the problematic children, how to take care of chores at home. You know, uh, some, in some family, uh, they just let the wife do every chore at home, every household work is her responsibility. That's unfair because it could be too much work. So the husband should learn to do the chores also, to share the work together. But I hardly see any African man wash the dishes for the wife. Now I do that all the time for my wife. I wash dishes all the time and I don't feel bad about that. I feel good about it. Whatever I can do to make her happy, I'm happy to do it. And I, when we talk, I always listen and respond to her feelings. So that's our way of life. Okay, and then the next step.